Good morning, folks. As you're going to see here in the opening sequence, the sun's going to try this again. Earth facing quiet just dominated one sunspot, and here comes another. Let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star. Until the end, there really isn't anything to see. Coronal holes are turning, but at the limb on the left, we see the brightening, and then the pops begin to release. Amidst a forest of plasma filaments, energetic eruptions began in the last few hours as a new sunspot crests the limb into view. Thus far, we have already seen a rise back into C-class range in the solar flaring. We will have eyes firmly fixed on this group in the coming days to see if it is able to make any significant eruptions in Earth's direction. While the last sunspot was a returning feature, this incoming group is brand new, less than 36 hours old in total. As we look from stereo A behind the sun and see the active area pop up out of nowhere, ready to spin in to face Earth. Not yet any significant visibility to the sunspots or their magnetism. Let's also note a decline in the solar wind intensity as the next coronal stream isn't expected for at least another day. Folks, there is a new paper, came right out of the New Valley of the Sun, University of New Mexico Solar Physics, a heuristic look at geomagnetism to predict solar cycles rather than heliocentric indices. They note long-term cycles just shy of the known 200-year solar cycle, and they indicate decreasing activity, likely to resemble the grand minimum in the coming years, with a shift back towards normal solar activity not coming until the 2070s. Up next, we have an article that discusses cosmic silence and the implications for extraterrestrials. Notable things in the article include the fact that in Earth's expected habitability, there is time for 23 more advanced species, which he says makes you wonder if there were great civilizations that came before us. He also notes that the technological age of a species should likely cause its demise within only about 200 to 500 years after becoming technological, which is somewhat horrifying if you can do basic arithmetic. But most importantly, the lack of an ET signal is this scientist's telling clue that we aren't going to see one. We will puff out and that life just doesn't exist long enough to make our movies come true. The lone drawback to his theory is it requires the complete discounting of the Earth nursery and Earth zoo hypotheses, which I happen to favor quite a bit. Last article is a regrettable one. First, we have excellent reporting of nearly 100 new volcanoes beneath the ice in Antarctica, most in western Antarctica. All that is righteous fair play. But they promote the importance of the story by saying the region is already affected by climate change and a volcano eruption could make the ice loss worse. Problem is, this is Western Antarctica, basically Amundsen and the Ross Sea. You remember, the one place on Earth not yet touched by climate change, where the glacial tongues are showing no signs, and the sea ice is anomalously high, indeed the cause of Antarctica's record high ice marks in 2013 and 2014. Good scientific study on the volcanoes, not quite sure about the journalism. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got the wind maps and shots of our star to close. We will do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.